So, as per my previous video, this Aliens USS Sulaco was available to me at a half price discount, which was uh, too good an opportunity to pass up, particularly as this is the XL size of the, of the Sulaco. Now, I don't know if there has been a smaller one. I'm pretty sure I did see on the website that there was a N other Sulaco model that's been out before now. Um, I couldn't swear to you that it's the same as this one that I'm about to unbox for you, but maybe it is. You'll see here that there is a, a slight dentage on this box, um, which is the reason why these things come so well padded, because my kind livery man seemed to misinterpret the this way up uh, signs plastered all over the outside of the double boxed box in which I got several models at the same time. So not Eagle Moss's fault, not Hero Collector's fault at all. Um, just the way the it was delivered, but I'm quite sure it will have survived because as you will hopefully see shortly These things are very well packed. Um, what can I tell you about the Sulaco? Um, in Aliens, this is the mothership of the colonial marines who are sent to investigate the situation on LV-426. Did that from memory, nice. Um, because the colony has gone silent and they want to find out what's what and obviously aliens then ensue. Um, the the photography on this ship was really beautiful. It just sort of slides past you on film. And this thing clearly means business. I love all the, the spiky knife edgy comms arrays and stuff on the front because it looks like a flying Swiss army knife. But only scarier <laughs> you know this shit clearly means business um i don't have any particular tech specs on it in terms of its actual kind of ship to ship weaponry and so on the thing is i don't even know if there was anyone for it to have to ship to ship combat with in the aliens universe particularly maybe if it came up against predators yes certainly but um generally speaking i think this was primarily intended to get marines from a to b and drop them to a planetary surface extremely rapidly using drop ships and also as we're told in the film to uh, to nuke the sites from orbit if need be so you know it's i don't even i don't even know how you class it in military terms i don't know if it's a a destroyer or a carrier um i'm not i'm not quite sure where it sits the other thing that also occurred to me when I was thinking about how to describe this to you is that unlike 2001 A Space Odyssey and its sequel in which um, a ship called the Leonov appears and the Leonov I would liken it or it's the predecessor of um, an Earth Omega class cruiser from Babylon 5 which has a rotating section. The Sulaco does not appear to have any rotating sections, yet the Marines quite happily bounce around on the floor plates. So I'm assuming from that, that Earth has artificial gravity tech at this point in time, which allows you to run around without the need for a rotating drum sort of section of any description. Um, that presumably is part, but I suppose it might suggest how they also achieve something approaching FTL. Although, again, saying that, I'm not actually clear that there is a canon definition of FTL in the Aliens universe because they do use hibernation quite a lot as a means of getting from A to B. So maybe they just go high sublight. I'm not sure, but even that would then take quite you know take a hell of a long time but there are long periods of travel time in the aliens universe so you know may, maybe they can't actually walk gravity enough to do so wormholes or anything clever like that but clearly there is quite a sophisticated amount of of tech on board this ship and i'm sure you could find a, a technical dictionary online if you wish to explore further so without further ado let me get into the box which will as per the, the dropship that I recently looked at, we'll undoubtedly have the the nice image of the Sulaco on the inside of the, the lid, which it does, and the nice black felt cushioner on the top uh, to try and keep your purchase safe in transit. Now this is, um, it's got a little uh, 
sort of inserts cover this locker. Ah, now, unlike the drop ship, this is very nearly the. I'm just going to put a finger on it just to make sure it doesn't go by the way. That's very much the, the full length of the box you can see there. Um, I'm going to get this out with a lot of care because I'm going to actually get it to stand ready first because it looks to me as if it's slightly tilted. Um, again, my delivery guy will not have helped the situation. Thank you, delivery guy. But what I'm conscious of is that, like the dropship, the um, the communication sort of array at the front, I'm assuming it's comms rather than anything else, um, but the, sort of the, the knives at the front of it are probably quite delicate and I don't want to risk uh, messing them up getting it out of the box because that would be a bad thing so let me use two hands for this oh dear well that I suppose is the is the risk that you you have when you are sending plastic things in the post. Um, it is a slight bugbear of mine with um, the way that Eagle Moss do thin bits on these uh, these models. I, I get that they probably can't do them in metal because it might be considered too too dangerous for small people, but um, that was right on the bottom and. As you can see, you know, there just, oops, there just isn't anything, there wasn't anything around it to stop it from being able to tilt. Um, and that was the difficulty here. So uh, you can't really see that because it's black on black, but um, there's, it was a big enough space that it, that it could, I think that it could tilt like this. And that's probably what's happened. It's knocked against the side of it because that one is right on the edge. Now, on the plus side, I do have some experience of repairing these. Um, I have only paid half price for it, so I'm, you know, I, I'm, I will grin and bear it and see if I can fix it. Um, I'm just looking at. I'm just trying to see if anything else is damaged. Ironically, that was actually a relatively sturdy one that's um, that's taken the hit. the The body is metal, by the way. Um, this bit where I'm holding it here, that's metal. So the weight is really good. Um, so it is a really good, it's just a damn shame that, um, you can see the angle that's at. It's a damn shame that the, the spikes and stuff have to be done in plastic all the time. Now, I think I will be able to fix that. Um, because it's not fully off. So I should be able to patch it and just put the tiniest bit of glue on there just to strengthen it and hold it in place but you can see I've managed to even just doing that with my hand you can see it is kind of wanting to go back to where it was before so I will have to take that one on the chin I think it's fair to say and let's have a look how she fits into her oops if I had any depth perception whatsoever that wouldn't have been a problem um have I not done that the right way around Surely it must be there. Oh, there's these little guns as well and everything. Even ah, is that it? Even the turrets are really tricky to avoid. It's um right. Let me. I hope that's the right place to put it. Now, let me just get rid of this box. One thing I will say about this is that unless I'm missing something, and I really don't think that I am. There are no, there is, n there are no booklets in these. Um, in the past, I have had booklets that at least give a little bit of detail on these ships when you, when you get the model. They're always thinner for the non-Star Trek issues, and yet there's just nothing in these boxes. Unless it's hiding really, really well. Uh, I'll just read you the blurb off the side of the box. It's the troop transport Sulaco was in service with the United States Colonial Marine Corps when it carried 2nd Battalion Bravo Team and Ellen Ripley into the orbit of LV-426 to investigate loss of contact with the colony there. And that's all it says. Um, 
Yeah, that's what it says. But that's literally only on the front of the box. There's no there's no magazine these days, it seems, with this version of the packaging. I'm still not entirely convinced that I think this must that must be the right sort of positioning, but on the box it looks like it should be at more of an angle up. Poor antennae. I'm, I'm very sad for it. Um however there she is. Um uh, colour type, colour, colour quality. I'm not sure. Um, should it be that grey? Interested to hear your comments. Um, it looks, it's pretty grey to me. It's a sort of, you know, generic, dark grey. Um, I think in the film it looks more, more like a sort of dark green colour. I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to go back to the film for that one, actually, really. But but then again, you see, when you get things in space and they're, you know, they're not lit in an atmosphere sort of setting, then it's really kind of down to the the filmmaker, I guess, as to what colour they, you know, they sort of turn out. So basically, we know, obviously we've got sort of we've got common rays here. There are dropship bays down here that we know there are various cargo bays, ordnance holders. Obviously, rear drive section at the back here. Um, I would imagine there are what could be um, point defence turrets. Um, I think, sorry, I'm putting like, the rest angle for you. Point defence turret here at the top and just tucked under the belly there. So they're probably forward and side firing, I would imagine. Um, these, This could be a rail gun, maybe, here, possibly. Um, things of that nature. Um, I don't know if it's got any sort of any fighter complement as such. I mean, we only know the dropships as far as I'm aware, but maybe in the comics they had fighters as well. Um, for you know, if there any sort of space superiority was needed, um, and the box is described as a transport rather than anything else. I mean, it's a fairly aggressive looking transport if that's all it actually is. But um, anyway, so that is the the Sulaco, and I will have to see if I can apply some first aid to her to try and um, fix that. I mean, you know, I, I honestly don't think that's particularly Hero Collector's fault. I think perhaps the box could hold it in place a little bit better because um, I think that was a roll issue rather than anything else. But in fairness to them, the box did say on the outside, this way up, fragile, don't drop me, don't do stupid things to me. And the odds are that stupid things were done to her. So that is unfortunate. Um, and that is outside of Hero Collector's control, so I don't have any particular sort of you know beef on that one. It's just uh, one of life's little uh, points of joy. So um, yeah, I better go see if I've got any of that that glue left, I guess, or perhaps on another day when there's a bit more light left to see by. Um, but that will that will stick, um, and I'm I'm reasonably good at it now. He says, so I'll try and put to put less glue on that than I did on my dropship model back in the day when I was uh, putting that together. Because that was a that was a mess. <laughs> but anyway, okay, so um, yeah, so that's the that's the Sulaco for you. So that's another one for my um, aliens related collection, of which I now have several. Um, I'm only getting them if they're on offer, and I I really wasn't planning on getting the Sulaco, but I felt that as I could effectively get two for the price of one, it was it would have been rude not to. So there you go. Okay, cheers for now. <laughs>